Hi all, in this video we will discuss about different list methods which we have in Salesforce or which we use while writing Apex code. So firstly what is list? A list is a collection of elements or records which you want to store and a list in Apex can store elements of any data type. It can be of a primitive data type, it can be a, a subject it can be users defined data type. and <clears throat> arrays and uh, arrays and lists are same in apex so what we do using array can be done using list okay <clears throat> and it's an ordered collection there can be duplicates in the list and it's like uh, how you insert the data in that particular list will be there if you insert a first so the a will be there if you insert b after that so it will be like b will be the first and after that a will be there in that particular list the indices will be assigned in that manner so at zeroth location will be your this thing uh, what i can see a and after that in first location b and in the same manner all the data will be there now we will see an example as you can see on the screen we have add uh, add is the method which you can use to add anything or any element to that particular list as you can see on this the highlighted thing in this we have just created one list that is l1 the list data type is integer so only integers can be added in this particular or in this particular list if you will try to add a string it will fail because you cannot add string in a list which is of integer okay so it's list of integers it's not list of strings so you cannot add string in an integer you can see the we have just uh, you have to just give the list name that is l1 and then you have to just dot and the add function so you, you have to just specify this thing and then you have to add the element it's 47 so 47 will be added in this okay <clears throat> for an example we will just debug this i will execute we want to see debugs so it's debug and this is the seventh line so in the seventh line seventh line you have only 47 is the element so 47 we have added and the same we have printed the list we have printed so there is only one element in this particular list so therefore it's only 47 in the debug box as you can see okay now we have next that is if you want to add an element at a particular index in the what I can say in the list then you have to specify first the index and then you have to specify what you want to add inserts an element into the list at the specified index position okay so you have to specify the index position in which or where uh, in which index you want to add that element so we have defined a list L2 in the same manner we have just added in the zeroth location we have added 47 in the first location we have added 57 and then system.debug uh, add li index list element so we will print l2 l2 is the list and then we have defined the list and defined it integer 6 okay so there will be six uh, indices created and if, it, if there will be a data then <coughs> the data will be there if, if there is no data then null will be there because there is no data as of now and we have only specified six indices right uh, while initializing or while creating that list then we have debugger like what is on index 0 and what is on L index 1 so on 0 it's 47 on 1 it is 52 so it should be 47 52 and L2 will be 47 52 null 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 uh, means uh, because 
we have defined six indices or the length of that list will be six and only two elements we have defined other than two all will be null as of now so we will just go to debug so you as you can see in the zeroth location we are we are having 47 in the first location it's 52 and then it's 0 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 okay so it total it will be seven records i think so 0 1 2 3 Four, five, six, seven. Yeah, it will be seven because uh, the indices starts from zero, so it will be zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Then we have a more method that is, if you want to clone any list, then you can clone it with the existing data which is there in one of the list. The only condition is both the list should have the same data type. So as you can see, we have created one account, account A equal to new account. The name of the account is Acme Billing City is New York. Then account B, we have just initiated that. Then we have account Q1 equal to new account AB. We have created that system.debug Q1 before. So what is there in Q1? Then we, we want to clone that into Q2. And in Q1, we just want to specify the billing city as set, uh, San Francisco and then we will debug like how it changes okay so we will just go and we will see oh, this thing okay so in Q1 before so there is Q1 before so what is on 21 Q1 before so what is there in Q1 in Q1 we have account name is Acme billing city is New York then what is in q2 q2 will clone q1 so it will be the same as you can see the same list is there nothing changes then we have on 25 25th line we have again the debug like we have updated something in that list like the billing city was new york now we have changed it to san francisco so let's see what changes we will just go to that and in this you can see Q1 after the name will be Acme and the billing city will now will be San Francisco. So as you can see, the first the name of the city was New York, and then after we have updated that thing, it's San Francisco. And we have uses we have used indices to do that stuff. Okay. Then next is contains. So as you as its name suggests, contains means if the list contain that particular element or not. It will be true or false in that case returns true if the list contains the specified element so if the if, if uh, what you are looking for is there in the list then it will return true otherwise it will return false as you can see we have defined or one list that is l3 of type string and we have uh, created two entries a and b will be there boolean result one equal to l3 the list contains b yes boolean result to l3 dot contains z so it don't have any entry for z or z so it will be false so it will be true and false so we will just go to debug we will just see 31 is true 32 is false contains z no contains b yes okay so in this manner we can use this method of list to check if that list contains this particular value or not or element a get method of a list will give you what's there in that particular index like if we want to know we have around 500 or 800 records in the list and we want to know in, in um, uh, like um, fifth position what is there 10th position what is there 60th position what is there so you can just get you can use get method and you can get data up of that particular index so returns the list element stored at the specified index so for an example we have created one list of integers we have added 47 in that integer my number equal to the list name dot get what is there in the zeroth position so in zeroth position what's there 47 so it will print 47 we will see that 38 
is the line number so zeroth position it's 47 okay and then we have uh, get a subject type what is the type of that particular s object returns the token of the s object type that makes up a list of s objects create a generic generic s object variable s object S object equal to database dot query select ID from account limit one. So what will be the S object in this case? The S object will be account type. System dot debug S object type equal to this query on uh, this name, uh, <coughs> which we have used to query that S object uh, to store what we get from this database dot queries result. We will just say S object or S O B J dot get a subject type so it will throw like what's the a subject type uh, so it's in line number 43 we will just go and see what is in 43 so a subject type is account we were we are aware because we know like from which object we are querying the data create a list of generic s objects so list of s object equal to q means like we have defined or we have just created one list and that list will have s objects and the new account is there then we will debug that and like what there in this particular list like the queue is the list name and what type of s object data is there in queue we will get that from there so then we got 47 and it's now again the account because we have created this for account as you can see then what's the it's index of list element return the index of the first occurrence of the specified element in this list if this list does not contain the element returns minus one so list of string l5 equal to new list of string and then we have defined something a b a integer result equal to list name dot index of a so there are two indexes might be it's not the index it's the element system dot debug index of a what's the result we will get this result index of b what's the result okay so we will just go to debug and we will check like the index of a is zero so what's the index at which position it is stored so if if there is a duplicate or if there is a same entry again so it will take it will take the first occurrence so when the first a was there at zeroth position this is at first position this is at seven second position so when we are searching for a the index will be zero if we are searching for b the index will be two if this a is not defined here then the index of this a will be two if the sub so for an example if c is there c b a then index of a will be two okay as you can see in the debug index of b is 1 and index of a is 0 okay then moving ahead we have is empty so this is uh, like a null check where we check like if the list is empty or not so we we will just do one thing like we will create a list then we will add an element to that and we will check if the list is empty or not in then we will create another list and there is nothing in this list we what means like we have not added a single any element in that and we are just checking like if this list is empty or not so in this case the list is empty in this case list is not empty because we have added 47 in this particular list okay so the debug is in 14 59 and 61 so we will just go in the debug logs Mm, so the debug was on 59 and 61 59 and 61 so 59 it's false because 47 was the element which we have added in the list and in 61 it's true because the list is empty as you can see we have added something to l6 that's why it's non-empty now and in l7 there is no element added so the list will be empty only we have created that list but we haven't added anything in that particular list that's why it's true now okay 
then uh, size so by using size method we can know like what's the size of that particular lay stand uh, in some of the uh, use cases we can check like if something is returned in that particular list or not or if the list is empty by checking like if the list size is less than zero or if the list size is uh, greater than zero then only we can know like there is something in the list and we can work on that particular data okay so integer l8 and uh, sorry it's a list of integers l8 is the name of that list and we are just checking the size so we will go and the debug and we'll let you know like what's the size the line number is last one so the size of this list is zero because there is nothing in this and the size of list n uh, l9 the size of this list will be six because we have defined it while creating that list okay so the size will be six for l9 l9 and the size will be zero because there is we haven't added anything and we have not defined it at the time of creation of that list but in case of l9 we have added it or oh, sorry we have defined like it will be of six indices that's why the size of the list will be six so that's all for uh, list methods the different list methods we have in salesforce which we use in apex while writing code so yeah thank you and have a nice day bye